Hey guys, uh, welcome to the Essential Oils 101 online edition. Um, I'm doing this because I've had several of you say that you wish you could come to one of my classes but are not able to because of life. And I get that. We all have busy lives. Being a mom, being a wife, being a homemaker, having a job. I get it. It's hard. And um, so that's why I'm doing this. I want to make it um, easier for you guys to get this information because it is so important and I love it and I just want to share it. So I just want to kind of give you a, a little bit of a rundown of how tonight's going to go. Um, there's going to be three separate videos. The first video is obviously this one <laughs> and it's going to be more of an introduction to oils, what they are, where they come from, um, how to use them, a little bit of history about them, a little bit of safety. It's um, pretty much the intro part. And then there's going to be a video two, and video two is going to be the explanation of what comes in your starter kit, and I'll pull it out. I'll actually pull one out for you and show you like how it will look when it comes to you, um, and show you each oil. The only bummer about doing online is I can't pass around the oil and let you get a good whiff of it, um, but when you get your kit, you can smell them for yourself. Um, so I'll show you everything that comes in the starter kit, um, and then there'll be a video three, and that to me is the most important video. If you don't watch any of these, which I hope you do, because you're watching this one right now, so that means you you care. But video three is super important. It it gets real with you guys. It gets down to the meat and potatoes as to why I've decided to share this with people, why we are in such a desperate need for these, for these oils. Um, it gives you some really crazy statistics. Um, and and it's, just, it's a really good video. So just make sure, and then it gives you steps on how to get yourself signed up and, and join this amazing oily team. Um, so yeah, that's how it's gonna go. Three videos, one, two, and three. Um, and if you stick around for all three videos and you comment on each post, maybe I'll send you something. And then if you get a starter kit, if you decide to sign up tonight, which I hope you do, um, your name will get entered into a raffle which will be full of some awesome, awesome oily gifts that I will mail to you. So, um, so I guess we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and try to jump right in. And now I, I, have, I have notes that I usually will hold in front of me when I'm teaching a class to keep me on, on topic because I like to talk and I'll sometimes wander off. So I've got my notes pulled up that I'm going to try and stick to because I know your time is valuable and precious and I really don't want to waste it. So I'm going to try my best to stay on topic and get you out of here to where you're not up so late. Okay, so how I want to start is uh, giving you a little bit about myself and how I came about the essential oils. Um, I've had them for about two years in my home, but I've been actively using them for about a year and a half. Because honestly, I'm gonna be real with you. I, when I got my kit, I, I, I liked the lavender. So, you know, I was like, that's all I really knew about. I knew lavender was great to put in your bath, help you, you know, unwind at the end of a really hectic day. So the rest of the stuff that was in there, I didn't know anything about. So it sat in my bathroom for six months and I'm so upset that I that, that I missed out on so much goodness for that long. Um, so the reason I actually cracked back open that, that kit though, um, my husband was constantly scratching at his feet and they were so red and so inflamed and they were just so irritating. And he was going to the store buying these foot sprays. I mean, and spraying them daily, constantly. It's just nothing but fogging up the air around us. And he wasn't getting any relief. And so I was like, this is ridiculous. I mean, okay. So I, I just kind of Googled natural ways to help his symptoms. And boom, peppermint oil pops up. And the first thing I was like, oh, I think I have some of that stuff. I think that was in that, that kid thingy that we got like six months ago. So I went and I got it. And he applied it. And seriously, y'all, by the next day, significantly better. I am not kidding. That is not made up. That is true. That is reality. It is a truth bomb. So, that got me interested. So I started kind of digging around a little bit more. Every time something would come up, I would just kind of think, well, can we use an oil? What about an oil? And slowly been bringing them into our life and kicking out the yuck. Every day that something new comes about, kick out the yuck, bring in the good. So that's kind of how I've gotten to where I am now. Um, so that's kind of my story. So now that you've learned about how I come about them. Let's just learn about the oils in general. Um, how this first video is going to go is we're going to start with what essential oils are, the history about them, different types of oils, some safety, 
Um, and then at the, like I said in video two, I'll actually show you the oils and tell you about each oil that's in your kit. So <clears throat> let's jump right in. What are essential oils? Essential oils are the most powerful part of the plant and they're distilled from shrubs, flowers, trees, roots, bushes, fruits, rinds, resins, and herbs. Oils consist over a hundred different natural organic compounds. In humans, they provide support for every bottom, body system. <laughs> like I just said bottom. Every system in your body, your skeletal system, your muscular system, your circulatory system, your endocrine system, your reproductive system, and your respiratory system. They support brain health, a healthy weight. There was actually a study done um, by Dr. Alan Hirsch um, using fragrances that included peppermint to help assist with this. And over 3,000 individuals saw some results where in other um, other programs that they participated in they, they saw nothing um, they are used extensively for emotions um, you can put some oils in a diffuser and that can soothe a child after a rough day at school um, it can provide a calming effect when you've had a stressful day at work um, the fragrance of an essential oil can directly affect everything from your emotional your emotional state to your lifespan that is crazy Oils can be used as an alternative to toxic cleaning chemicals. You can literally start swapping out every single chemical in your home with one bottle of Thieves Cleaner. One bottle. Guys, I was skeptical about this because I have used other products on like say my windows and my mirrors that are not Windex and they've left streaks. So I was thinking to myself, okay, but I tried it, no streaks. and. You know it's all plant-based. You know it's totally healthy. My kids can use it and be I don't have to worry. And literally, guys, one little capful makes a whole giant bottle, which pretty much it equals out to costing you about a dollar or a dollar fifty for a bottle of natural, safe cleaning cleaning solution. And you can't get that in the organic section at the store. You're gonna you're looking at four to ten dollars a bottle for what they could be or you know. So that's, wow. Okay. So there's about 300 oils on the earth, but you only need about 10 to 20 to get a good starter kit. Guess what? Your starter kit comes with 11. Boom. You're on the right, you're on the right track there. Um, you do not need to be an aromatherapist to use them. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know anything about aromatherapy. I am learning new every day, new, learning new things every day, but honestly, seriously, you can just, I'm an average day mom, average everyday mom, just trying to take care of my family. So, there are three main ways to use the oils. Um, the English like to apply it topically by rubbing it on the skin. The French ingest and cook with it, and then the Germans diffuse and inhale, um, which is the most effective way since it doesn't have to um, pass through your digestive system. So, how do they enter and how long do they last? Guys, this is crazy. Seriously. Tests have shown that oils reach the heart, liver, and thyroid in three seconds. That's fast, okay? And they're found in the bloodstream 26 seconds after they've been topically applied. That is crazy. So now you're probably wondering, okay, now that this stuff's in my system, how long is it there? You know, kind of, I, I was wondering the same thing. It's literally, okay, in a normal healthy individual, it's there for about three to six hours. Say if you're if you're not so healthy, it'll stay in there longer because your body literally is holding on to this because it needs it. And then when it's done, it's gone. No trace. When you have a, a pharmaceutical drug or an over-the-counter product, you're gonna have it's gonna be in your system and, and you have those uh, short lives and all that all that whatever medical stuff. I mean it's it and it attacks your organs. This doesn't do that. Okay? All right. So now, let's get into a little bit of a history about oils. Um, and this kind of will knock out that, oh, it's just the next fad thing that people are, will throw in your face because I've heard that. Oh, that's the new thing, huh? No, actually it's not. Um, so essential oils were first mentioned by name in Genesis chapter 37 when Joseph was sold to the slave traders. They carried spices, balms, and myrrh. Genesis ends with the burial of Joseph's father anointed with myrrh. Oils are mentioned over 1,100 times directly or indirectly in scripture. Some of the oldest cultures on earth used essential oils. 
The Babylonians placed orders for cedarwood, myrrh, and cypress. The Egyptians used essential oils for beauty and embalming, and they have the oldest recorded recipe for deodorant using essential oils. That's kind of cool. Pakistan and Rome used essential oils in the, in the communal bathhouses. Um, they were used by Christ. He was given gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Why do you think that the Lord ordered that frankincense be burned in the temple at all times? That's scripture too. Come on, people. Okay, and, and Frank, speaking while we're talking about frankincense, it's kind of called the coconut oil of essential oils. Now, I know all of you guys know what coconut oil is. I mean, give me a, a like or a thumbs up on your comment post if you guys use coconut oil. I use it for everything from cooking. I make stuff with it. We eat it. We rub it on our skin. I mean, we use coconut oil for every. My dog eats it, loves it. Um, but that's like frankincense. It's just like coconut oil because it can be used for almost anything. It has over 10,000 uses. That is a lot of uses for one oil. Okay, so they were also used by the medieval Europeans, many of whom brought oils back during the Crusades. Um, it was only after World War II when essential oils were rediscovered. Um, and the science on their use grows every year. All right, so now we've got the history. So now let's break down the different types of classifications of essential oils. Um, now, before I used Young Living, I actually used several different kinds of oils strictly for smell. Um, like, I would buy a bottle of lavender at the store for $4. Ugh, I'm just so ignorant. Um, so, I've used several different types of oils. Um, but here's the thing. In the U.S., there's no rating system for essential oils. The closest we get is an FDA requirement that in order to label a bottle of essential oils pure or therapeutic grade, the contents of the bottle only has to contain 5% oil. What? What's the other 95%? Yeah, chemicals. <laughs> it's helpful to know that all oils in the world fall into four different categories. You got your A, B, C, and D. Just like your meats, you think about your meat. You know, you've got good meat, not so good meat. You guys know, you know the different qualities. You've been to the different sub shops. You know when you're having a grade A sub or a grade D sub, just like your oils. Um, you've got grade A, which is therapeutic, made from organically grown plants, and it's distilled at low temperatures. You've got grade B oils, which are food grade, but may contain synthetics, pesticides, fertilizers, chemical extenders, or carrier oils. Grade C oils are perfume oils, and they often contain adulterating chemicals. That's stuff you're gonna find in the store, guys. They usually use solvents, hexane, for example, which, yeah, it's been known to cause cancer. Um, but they use that stuff to gain a higher yield of harvest. Solvents are cancerous, um, and which I just mentioned are, that's the stuff you're gonna buy in the store. They may also be diluted 80 to 95% with alcohol. Mm, that sounds great. I want to throw that all over myself. Grade D is pretty much called floral water, which is garbage. Um, it's an aromatic use only, and it's usually a byproduct of grade A distillation. Um, after all that oil, the good stuff is pulled out, the leftover trash water is sold. And then they've, they fill the, the little bottles up with 5% of trash water, and then they put the rest of the stuff in there so they can sell it to you for $4 a bottle. Um, grade A is the only true pure oil. Grade D would be just like pouring yourself a glass of orange juice and then diluting it 95%. Then where's your, benefit, where's your vitamin C? Like you're not getting anything. Okay, so before you purchase any oils, this is what you want to do. You want to make sure that the company grows their own plants, owns their own fields, and controls the entire process from seed to seal. Young Living is the only company that does that. Um, pesticides, pollution, previously farmed land, all of that can affect the quality of your oil. Um, why are you going to try and go to these links to get chemicals out of, your, out of your life and then go buy something that's full of them? Just be careful. So this is why I only use Young Living now. Um, their seed to seal process guarantees me that they are therapeutic grade A oil. Um, it's a promise of integrity. Gary Young, the founder of Young Living, has said that he never makes an oil for profit. He makes it for a purpose. 
every single product that Young Living has was created for a specific purpose and person. That is amazing to me. Um, seed to seal means that each plant is hand weeded. There's no pesticide used, no chemicals, no weed killers. The plants are harvested at their peak and then they run through a vigorous testing process. Then they go from the farm directly to your home. Seed to seal is not a slogan, it is a promise. Um, and you can learn even more about that by checking out um, Young Living's story at seedtoseal.com. It's really cool to watch. Um, everything about this company is so translucent. You can literally walk onto any one of their farms and see the whole entire process. They might even ask you to help them weed. I don't know, that's what I've been told. I've had some friends go and they were asked to help. Um, so, if you're wondering why some, chemi why some companies choose to use pesticides, dilute their oils with chemicals or other things like that, simple. So they can sell it for cheaper. Um, if you use a solvent to extract the oil, you're going to obviously pull out more. If you dilute it with a cheaper oil, you stretch that oil that you've distilled. Most essential oils are sold more cheaply because companies cut corners and quality. Don't, don't fall victim to that. So, how are the oils extracted? How do you get them? All right. Oils can be extracted in a variety of ways. You've got cold pressing the rinds of citrus fruits, steam distilling various parts of the plants, or through chemical abstraction. And we've just learned that chemical abstraction is not the way you want to go. It's just not a good way. So cold pressing and steam distillation is how Young Living distills their oils, depending on the best procedure for that particular plant. It takes a great deal of work to produce a small amount of oil. For example, let me just give you some, some statistics here. 60,000 rose blossoms gives you one ounce of rose oil. What? Lavender is... It's a little more abundant. You can get 220 pounds um, of lavender will give you seven pounds of oil. Jasmine, jasmine is the most expensive oil in the world. Literally, guys, this stuff is crazy. You have to be, this flower must be picked by hand before the sun becomes hot on the very first day that they bloom. Making it the most expensive oil in the world. That's a, what? You have to be like, you have to know that? You have to. That's crazy to me. And it takes 8 million hand-picked blossoms to produce 2.2 pounds of oil. That's crazy. A sandalwood tree has to be 30 years old and 30 feet tall before it can be cut down for distillation. That's crazy. But a little goes a long way. So most of your oils are going to range you from $10 to $30 a bottle. A 5 ml bottle like the ones that are in your starter kit have about 90 drops in them. A 15 ml bottle has about 250 drops, but each application is only about one to three drops, meaning that even in one of your small bottles that comes in your kit, you're gonna get 45 to 90 applications. That's awesome. So, we're gonna jump real quick into safety. So, I get asked this a lot. Um, are they safe? Can I, can I, can I put them on my skin? Can I, can I ingest them? Here you go. There are certain oils that are photosensitive, which means you don't want to like lather yourself up in them and go sit out in the sun. Don't do that. And those are your citrus oils, um, like grapefruit, lemon, orange. But get this, interestingly enough, most photosensitive oils are the ones that are cold pressed. Since the oils are found in the skin of the fruit, they're tropical plants. So just think about how, how that works. So God created the, the skin, the rind, to attract the sun to help produce the most amazing fruit. So if you're gonna lather that on your skin, that's gonna attract the sun to you. That's so cool. Okay, so when you use any oil on your skin, you obviously wanna watch for redness. You know, if it's your first time applying an oil, and what's really cool is the bottle t will tell you if you need to dilute them or if you can apply it neat, which means just putting it straight on your skin. Um, so you can dilute it with coconut oil or olive oil. Um, when you're using them with children, you always want to make sure you're diluting children and elderly um, because their skin is more permeable, which means it absorbs way more quicker than, than, than ours. Um, always use caution when you're applying oils near the eye. You do not want to get peppermint in your eyeball. That happened to me, and it hurt. It burned. But if you do, make that silly, foolish mistake like, like I did. Seriously, all you have to do, put a little bit of carrier oil on it, and it will suck it right out. It is amazing. 
the, the fatty oil slows down the, absor the absorption process. So, I mean, you could even put a little bit on a cotton ball and just stick it near your eye and it will literally draw it out. So cool. Okay, so whenever you are using it around your face, don't go dump in the bottle near your face. Maybe apply it onto a, a Q-tip or a cotton ball to get it where you want. Um, so yeah, a lot of people also wanna know about the internal use, okay? It may not be for some people, I, I, we do it, but here, here you go. The National Association of Holistic Aromatherapy, which is one of the top aromatherapy schools in the U.S., does not advocate essential oils for eternal use. Why? Most oil companies do not carry the generally regarded as safe grass essential oils, which have, which have been cleared by the FDA. Naha also bases a lot of their decision on the British model of aromatherapy, which advocates topical use only. Many of the British studies are flawed because of the studies use extremely high doses for their tests or they use lab created oils. What do you expect? So Young Living utilizes all three methods. We trust our oils. We know what therapeutic grade they are. We go, we do the British, the French and the German topically, aromatically and internally. Um, the French have been using essential oils internally for decades. Young Living has created a vitality line which has a distinctive label. Um, so it just makes it, it's the same oil, but it just makes it more, um, it's just easier for people to see that, okay, this one, okay, I, I can ingest this one, totally fine, safe. Um, and you'll see it, I'll show you in, in the starter kit. Five of them in your starter kit are Vitality Dying. So I will show you the difference between the two labels. Um, so while, while we're talking about safety though, you know, People ask all these questions, all these concerns about these oils. Are, are they safe? Can I do this? How often have we been throwing stuff on our bodies daily that we thought were safe and come to find out are not? So that kind of, that kind of frustrates me. Um, <clears throat> I mean, here, look at the ingredient list on, on, on the backs of bottles of what you have in your bathroom and in your kitchen. I encourage you tonight, after this whole thing is done, go to like three of your main cabinets and pull out some of your ingredients, some of your cleaners, some of your shampoos, some of your soaps, washes, and read the back of them. If you can't pronounce what's in it, you probably shouldn't be using it. Um, so we put that all over us. So, and did you know that the average woman puts on 300 different chemicals a day and 80 of those are just before breakfast? with our, show, our soaps, our shampoos, our face lotions, our makeup. That's a lot of chemicals. Okay, so when you're using a Young Living product, you're getting that. When you're using a Young Living oil, you're getting that one item that's in the oil. When you're using lemon, you're getting lemon. When you're using lavender, you're getting lavender. None of this other gunk. So, that was like the whoa. That's like the, the history. All of the, the meat and potato kind of, 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 of oils, like where they come from, how you use them, safety. And that's a lot of the stuff that when I started, I had no clue about. There you go. I just gave it to you. Okay. So this is video one. You guys stuck out and listened to the whole video. I'm so proud of you. Okay. So when this video ends, video number two is going to pop up and we're going to dive into that starter kit. So do not leave. Stick around and, and pay attention for video two. See you in just a few minutes.